World War I. It was meant to be the war that ended all wars. There were a lot of important battles, like the Battle of Amiens, Verdun, the Somme, Gallipoli, and there's many others. In this video, I'll be focusing on the battles of the Isanza River. There were a series of 12 battles between Italy and Austria-Hungary, and they really show us the military incompetence on the Italian side. Today, the Isanza is called the Socha River, and it's located mostly in Slovenia. It sources in the Julian Alp mountain range, and it drains into the Adriatic Sea by way of Italy. During World War I, the Socha, or the Sanzo, was the border between Italy and Austria-Hungary, and was the location of 12 battles fought there. At the outbreak of World War I, Italy was a part of the Triple Alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary, but in the secret Treaty of London in April of 1915, the Allies promised Italy some land from Austria, so in return, Italy switched sides and joined the Allies instead. Up to that point, they had remained neutral in the war, even though they were with the Central Powers. Italy officially joined the war on the 23rd of May 1915 by declaring war on Austria-Hungary as an ally of the Allies. The first battle of the Isonzo started on the 23rd of June. Italian commander Luigi Cadorna employed a military strategy called frontal assaults which involved sending a full-force attack into the enemy's front line without any type of flank. Since the Austrians had fortified the mountains next to the river, the Italian army could be held back by the defenders pretty easily. The Italians were able to capture some territory from the province of Gorizia, but the Austro-Hungarians were able to retake whatever was lost. Two weeks after the failure of the first battle, General Cadorna ordered the second one. This time, he used heavy artillery to disrupt the defenders in their trenches, before using his frontal assaults to overwhelm the Austrians. The problem was, there wasn't enough weapons, equipment, or supplies on the Italian side, which wasted their numerical advantage. There was a lot of close-range fighting with heavy casualties on both sides. The second battle officially ended when both sides ran out of ammunition. The Italians had managed to capture Mount Batonica, but the Austrians were able to keep or retake all other territory. General Cadorna waited two and a half months after the second battle to launch the third. He made sure to bring a lot of artillery which he used to advance all the way to Plava, crossing the Isanzo River. Thanks to the leadership of Svetozar Borievich, the Austria-Hungarians were able to hold back the Italians. Eventually, they were able to push them all the way back across the Isanzo River. The fourth battle happened only a week after the third battle. The Italian second army was tasked to capture Gorizia while the Italian 3rd Army held the rest of the front. There was a lot of unsuccessful frontal assaults all over the Solenza River, and by December, four weeks later, fighting between the two sides had died down. An official truce ended the conflict since the Italians had run out of supplies. At this point after the fourth battle, Austria asked Germany for help against Italy, but help wouldn't actually arrive until the 11th battle. The fifth battle didn't start until mid-spring, and it was meant to distract the Central Powers from the Battle of Verdun, which ended up being the longest battle of World War I. After only a week of fighting, and 2,000 men dead from each side, fighting had to stop because of terrible weather conditions. The Italians were actually able to take control of Mount Sabotino, which they would use for the next battle. In August, the sixth battle was meant to finally capture Gorizia for the Italians. After bloody close quarters combat, General Cadorna's forces were able to cut off the transport road leading into Gorizia from the south. Since the Italians took over Mount Sabatino in the fifth battle, and were able to capture Mount San Michele in this one, the defenses around Gorizia had fallen, and the Italians were able to finally force a bridgehead across the Sanza. Happy with the victory and suffering many losses, Italy ended the offensive here as the Austrians retreated to new defensive positions. The 7th, 8th, and 9th battles were all only a few days long in the later half of 1916. Using short, concentrated attacks, Cadorna was able to push deeper into Austria-Hungary, but at the price of heavy Italian casualties. Over the course of the three battles, the Italians were able to extend their hold on the area around Gorizia and push deep into the Karst Plateau. Italian attacks all over the Isonzo had weakened the Austrian defenses. The Italians wanted to wage a war of attrition, to wear out the defenders before the Germans can come and help. Following the ninth battle in November, the Italians took a long break over the winter and began the 10th battle in May of 1917. The 10th battle was coordinated to happen at the same time as the Aina offensive on the Western Front. 
Instead of pushing forward from Gorizia, the Italians wanted to capture Triste to the southeast. The Italians were able to cross the Isonzo and reach Triste before an Austro-Hungarian counterattack retook most of the land that was lost. At this point, casualties were high and Italian morale was low, so General Cadorna called an end to the battle and began to plan one final attack. For the 11th battle, Cadorna wanted to break the Austro-Hungarian defense and isolate the defenders. The Italian attackers were able to conquer some areas, but not others. After a month of bloody fighting, the Austrian army was exhausted and wouldn't have been able to stop another coordinated attack. But the thing is, the Italians were just as drained, and they couldn't find the resources for one more push to end the whole thing. The Royal Bavarian Infantry Lifeguards Regiment was a local German regiment that fought in the 11th battle for Austria-Hungary. But in October of 1917, the Germans had finally arrived. For the first time, the Austro-Hungarians were the ones attacking, and with German help, they were able to completely destroy the Italian army. The Germans used poison gas and artillery to disrupt the front line, and then overwhelm the Italians, forcing them all the way into the Piave River, where the Central Powers' advance was finally stopped in the Battle of Monte Grappa. Over the course of these 12 battles, Almost 1 million Italians had died serving their country. There is also a total of 500,000 Austro-Hungarian deaths from many different people of many different ethnicities, including Austrians, Slovenes, Bosnians, Hungarians, and more. Even though the battles of the Sanzo River were a complete failure for the Italians, it's important to understand why. Because of the mountainous terrain of the Sanzo region, the Italians were forced to funnel into bottlenecks that completely negated their number advantage. General Luigi Cardona's poor leadership led to many deserters over the course of the 12 battles. The man didn't even consider his supplies and the number of soldiers he had until the third battle. 